Hello, it's Donnie Walker. Let me just make sure this thing's on. Yeah, it's on. Well, how's it going out there tonight? What is it? Uh, Thursday, Friday night, Thursday night? Oh, it's Thanksgiving in the USA. Happy Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much tonight. So uh, I just want to say thanks. And you see what I'm wearing on my hat? I got a, I have a Vernon Fire Rescue hat on. A nice fella, Dean Wakefield. He's one of the captains there. Been there for a long time. Uh, checked out some of my videos. And knows a friend of mine, Mike Akers. Uh, my dad's friend. And he does some old saw stuff himself. Dean does. And some old outboard stuff. So need help with them there. Like I said in the earlier video. I'll give you a hand. But yeah. I got your patches up. A couple of my. I'm a sticker on my window. In my dino room. And uh, I just put this on there. Just to show you. You shouldn't really wear one. If you're not really a firefighter. But I respect everyone that uh, does all that type of work. Okay guys. Cool. Right on. That'll go on my wall bud. Okay. So. John Thread, here's some interesting stuff, okay? Before we do this carburetor, I'm gonna show you some models of John Thread uh, that I pulled off Mike Aker's site, the chainsaw collector's corner. You go on there, you can pull off every, almost every saw that's made in the world in a year of them and tells you everything about it. I've told you this before. So this is very, very cool. So this one doesn't even have a date that it was made, but, the next one that I pulled off was in the uh, 1954 to 60 range, but this one obviously had to be before because it's in the on the list. It's the first one that they had there. Model Model P, made in Par Partil, Sweden, 50 cc, one cylinder, rotary valve intake method, like screaming go kart engines and some old dirt bikes. Rotary valve intakes the the best way to go, man. They were ahead of the times. 1.3 kilowatts at 4,500 RPM. One man operations, trifocal clutch, gear reduction uh, transmission to it, to clutch, uh, magnesium, injector carburetor. And the reason it has an injector carburetor because it's a diesel. Diesel ignition timing, um, 10 to one if you're running gas. This thing runs on diesel, fuel, kerosene, or gasoline mixed gasoline amazing I, i've seen one of these a guy had a diesel one a fellow one time came here either from saskatchewan or manitoba and it wasn't wasn't you tin man hey buddy how's it going on there hope you're warm out there and hope the wife and the baby are doing good anyways this fellow came here collecting saws and he was from out in the prairies uh wish i could get hold of him again but i gave him a or sold him a couple old mccullough's and I should have never done it because I wasn't into it at that time, but I am now. Uh, but he had one of these in his van, and I went out and looked at it. It was totally cool. So the way they worked is, let's give you a close-up here. In the handlebar here, in the handlebar was propane, and you used that with this wick to light it, and then it lit, lit the diesel. Is that ever a cool-looking saw, eh? How heavy was it? Um, does it tell me? Weight, where was the weight? Uh, doesn't tell me. Oh, 22 pounds. So yeah, here it is there. Look at that, maybe that's a lightweight bar from years ago, eh? So cool, eh? So I don't know what year this is. It's early 50s or mid 50s. So yeah, Model P. Check it out, man. So then the next one I got here is Model XA. Now it's a diesel too. It, says, it also says it runs on diesel fuel, kerosene, and gasoline. Now that's really weird. I don't know how they got got that figured out. Maybe that's not right on here, but I swear someone will comment on it. 1954 to 1960, this one was made. 50 cc, same thing. Rotary valve intake. Very cool. Here's a picture of it. John Shred Racket. Como. Isn't that cool? There it is there. So tell me, did John Shred build a saw before Husqvarna? Even I don't know that. I should know that. I'll figure that out. I'll look in Mike's book again. Okay, so that's a cool model. Then now here we go. This is interesting to all you still folks out there. 
Still 500 eye lovers thinking that still is the first injected saw. Oh, they aren't. 1957 to 1960, 62cc John Thread model XB. It has a rotary valve intake and the carburetor is injector. Stefa magneto type. There it is. Is that cool? I believe this was the first injected saw ever. 57 to 1960. That's just cool. Okay? Very cool. Jaunts reds are cool. So let's get into this carburetor. Oh, I just want, also wanted to show you. Um, this set I got here, this tool set. You get them from Echo. Or, um, what's the brand? Fellow. This has got like almost every... Torx driver you need, Allen driver you need, screwdriver, uh, Phillips, and 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 yeah, Allen and Torx. Yeah, Allen Torx and screwdriver and Phillips. Got this nice little handle. You can put it straight in into there or on the side for more torque. What a great little set. I forget how much it costs. I think it was a bit pricey, but you know, for a for a hobbyist or even a mechanic that's going out to do a service or something, you got all that with you. So yeah, check it out. I'll get you a part number one day. <coughs> okay, so let's get into this um, HS tilts and carburetor because I really want to fire this thing. I'm going to fire it tonight right here in this little room. Bug my brother Johnny. He's got the rock and roll going on upstairs in his man cave in his pinball room. We'll go up for a little look at that maybe a little later to show you. He's got, he's got a pinball addiction. He's got about 10 of them now. Okay, I'm going get to you, get you a good close-up here because guys commented that um, they couldn't see me too good working on the Johnson the other night and that's true but I'm going to get a bench so I can actually be behind it and in front I'll be working on it I'm going to make a little bench in here let's get at this then okay so Tilson basic carburetor the most widely used one everywhere on chainsaws pretty much eh um low speed high speed idles on the side of the case that pushes it open and closed okay the function of the these carburetors all depends on your pulsation from your your crankcase or your your cylinder here's the pulse hole and the way it works is that when the piston's going up and down it creates like a vacuum pulse and you have to have that from the saw to make this carburetor work right okay i showed you in that video the other day where how the pulse comes out of this saw right there in the intake okay i put the oil in there you see oil squirting out so you know it's going to pulse as you're pulling it over see somewhere right now moving okay because i put oil in it the other day okay so that there you have to have that pulse and that's when you're rebuilding saws or you're putting carbs together you got to make sure that's all proper or it's not going to work right so yeah you have to line this carburetor gasket and carburetor up with that hole when you mount it to the saw and that way it's all going to work right this gasket i should have maybe replaced it but uh it's in good shape it'll be fine okay so function of the carburetor the the pulse comes in here and on top here these four screws on the flat plate is your fuel pump diaphragm as this is pulsing it moves the diaphragm up and down here pulls fuel into this carburetor and pulls it into your metering chamber to your diffuser jets where the fuel is going to come out through your idle circuit your low speed circuit and your high speed circuit and it's all done through the metering diaphragm metering chamber area once i get once we get this off i'm going to show you that first of all any carburetor and fuel tanks hoses like i said the other night check make sure it's holding pressure okay Pump your gauge up. I showed you, told you guys on Amazon, you can order these gauges. Oh, this one ain't working too good, is it? Leaking. Leaking bad. Make sure the gauge is working right. Here, gauge is working. Wow. Something's leaking bad in here. Okay. So, want to find out where it's leaking? The squirt around the, the, um, Around the um, plate there first, and then we'll squirt our. Then we'll check our needle for leaking. 
get a little bit of fluid like WD-40 or something like that and squirt around it. You can see it bubbling. Oh, it's leaking like crazy out of the plate here. Well, I guess so, it's loose. <laughs> Let's tighten the screws and recheck it. Then we'll know to make sure that that ain't leaking before we go check our needle, right? You always want to start on this side first and keep your other side together, though. Yep, so you just want, you want to check first. Still leaking. Let's tighten it a little more. Might be leaking somewhere else, but we'll squirt some more fluid on it. Yep, yeah, still leaking. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's from the gasket. Nope, not from that side. So now we're gonna we'll leave the side on and we're gonna take the the metering side off and then check our needle for leaking here. So now this is the metering side where your where your adjustments are, your low speed and your high speed, and you got four screws screws here. On this side, always be careful when you're taking these apart. Lay your parts out nicely on a nice rag um, and keep keep them in, in order. So you got four here. And they're different sizes than the other side. So you can't really go wrong. Just don't try to jam a big one in a small hole. Uh, so let's get this off. Metering plate. Get a little top. There it goes. A little bit of sawdust behind there. Hey, remember, this thing's pretty old. And I don't think it's ever even had a carb kit. So let's get this off. On this side, the diaphragm is first. The membrane that moves up and down for your metering system and your gasket is on the bottom sealing it so you want to put it back in that order a lot of guys get that confused so this side gasket first diaphragm other side is diaphragm then gasket okay we got that off let's put our pumper back on very clean inside there there's your your uh, low speed welsh plug which is in your uh, uh, idle and low speed circuit and this is your high speed welsh plug and underneath there, I'll, I'll, I'm going to, I guess I can't take these out tonight and show you, but I will on another carburetor because I don't have any here to replace it. And I want to run this thing. Put our pumper back on and let's see where this thing's leaking from. Let's get some fluid on that needle, just like there's gas in it. Always put like a gas or a solvent in there. Okay. Oh yeah, look at the needle. Bubbling, eh? She's bubbling. She's a bubbler. Okay. So. Let's take the other side off now. And we're gonna clean that side and make sure that diaphragm's good. And the screen is good, the screen, inlet screen where the fuel comes through. So we know we have a needle leak, so it's either the needles either got varnish under it, making it leak, or it, I would say it got it's gotten hard maybe, and it's not sealing right in the in the built-in seat on these car riders. These do not have a removable seat. Uh, so if the seat gets bad, uh, you can try to fix it uh, with a couple tricks I have uh, if the new needle doesn't work. Okay, so there's our, there's our fuel pump cover and diaphragm. It's kind of old and wrinkly a bit, eh, like me. Um, and there's your, you know, that should still work though. It looks pliable enough it should still run. Okay, same, same with this one. It, it, that'll, that'll work. We, gotta, we just got to fix the leak, okay? So... Blow it all off a little bit, right? Make sure there's nothing in there. Screen looks clean, but I'm gonna take it out using my dental pick, like I said. Thank you, Taylor Walker, my beautiful daughter that gets these from the dentist for me. She's not stealing them. She's, they're just the doll ones they won't use anymore. She's not a stealer. Okay, screen's out. There's a little bit of, little bit of uh, old dressy stuff in here. Not bad though, very, very clean, okay? So that side's off. Now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna take the um, metering lever and the pin and the needle and the spring out. Just be careful you don't lose the spring. Uh, so, someone, not, some people might not have a spare one, so just, just be careful. I just loosen this off, this nut, then I just work the pin out. I don't, I don't take the screw out normally, unless I really have to. Okay, so there's our needle, our metering lever and our pin. Leave, lay that down there. There's our spring. 
and there's our hole where the needle goes in. We'll spray a little brake clean through there. Normally I'd have Q-tips. I do at, the, I do at my normal shop because you can clean these seats with Q-tips. And you can um, also put toothpaste on your Q-tip and run it in and out of that hole to try to clean the seat and actually make the needle reseat again. Okay? Just an old trick I've done. Okay, so I've cleaned that. Um, it, there's no blockage. It doesn't look that bad in there. I, don't, I just don't know why it's leaking. Obviously, from that needle, though. So let's get our screen back in this side. Get that in there. You, you can use like a uh, Allen wrench. It's also almost the size of the hole or something else, and just push it down nice and even. Get it down in there. So your little little hole on the side here too, where the fuel comes in, is is isn't obstructed. Okay. Got that. Where is it anyways? What am I doing here? If someone doesn't have that. Oh wow, in different series. Okay, get that back in there. Okay, back in there. Now, the fuel pump side, we're getting to put back together right now with four screws. Diaphragm first, it, it's moving around fine. It's not hard or, or, or rotten, okay? Cover back on, this gasket's fine, looks okay. Get that back on, get our four larger screws through it. See, I had them all laid out in a nice spot there. Donnie's somewhat organized when he's working on stuff, but not too much anywhere else, eh, honey? Or, you know? Okay. Let's get these tightened up. That's where nice screwdrivers are good. I got... Oh, see what I was just doing? You Working like this with that screw, tightening it with this in my hand, not a good idea. I put a screwdriver through my hand a couple weeks ago doing this. Set the carpenter on the, on the bench. Man, I almost... Do what I say, don't do what I do, or whatever. Okay, get this tight. Now, if the screwdriver slips, I'm going to hit the bench. I'm not going to go through my hand, okay? It's happened a lot to small engine mechanics. Okay, let's look at this needle. Well, it doesn't look too bad. No ridge on it. It's not real hard. Let's put a little oil on it. Soften it up, maybe. Turn my oil can. Want oil? Okay. We'll get some more oil. Husky XP oil. Brand new one. It's stupid. We get these oils with our brand new saws, but they're not the right size for Canada. They're they're for a gallon in the U.S., but not a gallon in Canada. <laughs> so people don't mix it right. So I just bring them home and use them for lubricant. Okay, so get a little oil on that thing. Just to soften the needle up, maybe, or the rubber up maybe, eh? Okay, let's put it back together. Now, Now our um, spring underneath the metering lever, which is this and the pin, I always give these old ones just a little stretch, just in case they wore a little bit. Okay, not too much though, or you don't, it's too much pressure on the needle. You won't have the right pop-off pressure. And we'll go through pop-off pressure another time. Okay, so let's get the springs in there now. Here's the lever and the pin. Put the needle in the little little fulcrum, fulcrum arm, I call it. Fulcrum arm. And let's just set it back down in there. Get your spring lined up. Push your pin over under that screw. Okay. And then turn the screw down a bit. Make sure that pin's in there right. No, nope, a little down. Okay. Let's get that in there. Okay. Give it a little snug. Okay. Here's your metering lever. Needle's moving up and down. The setting for this, this lever in, in conjunction with the body is important. Uh, here's a wall roll gauge that has all their different series of carburetors on it to, to, to change your height of that, okay? Here's a Zamo one, same thing for their carburetors. This one, I've always used 
the the technique of having it level with the inside of the body i've done that for years on these carburetors and i always have and it works perfect okay it's like setting the float on a car carburetor okay so up if it's up too much it'll flood out and run too rich if it's down too much it'll lean out and not run right okay let's check this thing out now get the hose hooked back up to it look at that it's holding pressure bonus No leak, no leak, maybe a little drizzle. Okay. Kind of bubbled there for a second, I'm just rechecking it again. Now as I'm moving up and down. Nope, we got her. Yeah, how? This little baby's gonna run. Okay, get our tester off now. Now, when I was saying how this these things work, you know, with the impulse, moving the fuel pump diaphragm. So once once you got your choke on and you're pulling it over, it's trying to, you know, it's trying to pull air through, obviously, the suction of the of the motor, the vacuum. So unless you gotta have this the idle circuit set to set up just a little bit to an idle. And and then the choke on okay and once it fires you push the choke off and and then, then it'll run on the fast idle on the fast idle of the of the trigger okay so because the valve is going to be open up a bit not on the idle stop it's going to be open a bit for the fast idle on initial startup so then the, all the air is going through there and through the diffuser jets of the low speed you get some dribbles of fuel come out of the diffuser jets, and, and then that's your idle, okay? Your first hole here. Then as you crack it open more, now you hit your mid-range and your other low-speed uh, diffuser uh, circuit there, low-speed circuit. Then at full open, you know, you're getting it through the, which some carburetors have a nozzle here in the high-speed in the Venturi, but this one doesn't. Underneath this high-speed Welsh plug, though, there is a screen under there, and some old saws that have been used a lot, that screen can get full of, of debris and sawdust that comes through your fuel filter and comes into the carburetor. So watch that. If you if you rebuild one of these carburetors and it's still leaning out and dying out, take that Welsh plug out and clean that screen or get rid of it. I usually just clean them or replace them. They come in a kit. They used to come in a kit years ago. I don't know if they still do. Check it out with your RK23HS carburetor kits. Okay, so... That's how, it, that's how it starts, eh? On the fast idle, then when you click the throttle off the fast idle, it clicks it down to an idle, okay? Then when you hit the throttle, you want you want the, thro the, the saw to react. Whee! It should react real quick, right? And if it doesn't, if it goes bah, like that, like it's not enough fuel. So think about it like your cold water and your hot water in your sink. So if it dies out like that on on the pickup you know you need more low speed fuel that's like opening the cold tap up a quarter turn so open it up a quarter turn now it it's got response bonus and you let go of it and it goes back to idle and it's idling fine you know that's set right now your your high speed you should have it at like a preset okay this one i'm going to set this is one and a half on the low and one on the high then adjust from there so always have the higher preset. Now, as your full throttle, if it's running real rich and smoggy, uh, you force stroking people call it, then you can turn it in until it sounds smooth. It's just revving nice, then just back it off about an eighth turn. It just hits that little rich spot once in a while, okay? That'll save your saw and make it run cooler. cooler. And fuels power. You don't want to run it too lean and out crazy, eh? Okay? So yeah, that's the function, and that's how you adjust it. And we'll show you when we, when I run it here. Like it's hard to do when I'm going to run it. So metering diaphragm back on. Gasket first on this side, then the diaphragm. The diaphragm's got this little hook thing in the middle. Get it under the fulcrum arm and into the middle of that slot. Get this turned around the right way, Donnie, and then we'll put it back together. Okay, into your little slot there. 
A lot of people don't get that in there right and they wonder why it doesn't run, okay? Some of these don't even have that little hook. They just have a flat spot that pushes up and down on the fulcrum arm or your metering lever, if you want to call it that. I don't know, I just always called it fulcrum arm. Me and my dad have done that, called it that for years. Okay, four screws back in. Hey, uh, I'm hungry. I've, uh, I'm on this new diet thing. I uh, just had this big protein shake and uh, coconut milk. Um, uh, had it for for my breakfast and basically my lunch. And then had a just a granola bar and a V8 juice. That's all I've had today. So I'm getting a little hungry now. It's 5.30 or 6 now, eh? But I'm going to try to lose some weight. Feel better. That way my joints will be better too. And my porting, my hands won't get as tired as they normally are. Okay. Enough for me. Let's get back to this baby. Okay. Carburetor's ready. So I'm going to get you guys up on a <coughs> tripod now and show you how to put the carb on. And then we're going to fire it up. Okay. I brought that tonight. Let's try to view better here. Okay, get this on here. Hopefully I don't lose you. I have a waste of a video. Okay, how's that? I think that's pretty good. Okay. All right. So, carburetor, intake horn, carb bolts, choke lever. Should be a little tiny cotter can here that holds the choke lever on. So we need. Okay. So, let's move these wires out of the way. We know our fuel lines are good. Now, which way did this thing go? Probably like that. Let's go like that. See how that looks? Yeah, that looks right. Okay, All right. Gaskets on. Bolts are through. Okay, let's get this on, and then we'll plug our fuel line on after. Okay, so this sit down in there. See the boot the carburetor adjuster. It's got a little boot here. Get your needles in there. Okay, there you go. Okay, that's not right. There we go. Okay, let's get this one bolt started. Does that adapter look right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. over there okay come on it's been a few days since we took it apart eh yeah i can't remember everything all right come on that's on there's our idle stop there you see how they go through the side of the case here with the screw and you're low at high speed right there. Okay, let's see. That on. That on. Let's get our forceps here. Let's get our fuel line hooked up. Fuel line hooked up. Okay, fuel line's on. Throttle's working. There's our switch wire. Or point wire. Okay, so let's make sure this is tight. Okay, so very tight. And I didn't preset that carburetor, and I'm going to right now. Okay, so low speed, I'm going to start off at one and a half. Almost all these old cards worked at that. Okay, half, one, one and a half. High, start off at one. Half, one, okay. Now let's get our top cover on. Oh, choke, let's get our choke on. 
Getting ahead of myself. Choke on with the cotter key here. This little cotter key goes right through here. Straighten it out a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a neat little brass cotter key. Okay, things lasted all this time. Get her through there. And we get some. Oh, this will work. Okay. Okay, get it over there. And we're just going to bend it over so it doesn't fall out, eh? Okay, here we go. That's working. Spark plug. Say one that was in it. Give her a little brake clean here. Just clean it off. Put a little oil on it. Okay. I know we got spark. We know we got sparky. Okay, let's get that tight. Plug tight. All right, wires. One to the coil and the points and condenser. The other one to the switch. From there too, that'll kill it. Okay. Let's put this on. No way. Oh. Okay, that's good. A couple bolts. Yeah, nice, nice saw. Eh? And that was interesting. Those old, those old ones, man. I sure would like that guy to get hold of me that has that one in Canada. I'd like to see it run and even try it. You know, yeah, that's just too cool. So if anyone has any of those out there, any of those old ones like that, man, let me know. I'd love to have one. Yeah, they're just, they're just so cool, man. Okay, we're ready to rip. You know what though? It takes fuel to run, eh? I just got some beautiful fuel here. Aspen. The best. Hey, okay. Can't beat it, man. I think in the bottle, it's good for five years. Opened up, I think it's good for like three. Very good high octane, great oil. Spill a little bit, sorry. Okay. Good stuff. You can almost run this stuff indoors and it won't hurt you. Don't recommend it, but they used to do logger sports inside arenas and stuff and they'd run that type of fuel. Okay. Gas cap on. S switch on. Choke. And I'm not reenacting anything here. We're going right with it, dudes. Okay. Let's get this back. So I can pull it over and get her running. I think I know how to start a power saw. Okay. How's that? Okay. Let's check her out. Fast idle on. There's your button right there. You hold that in. Let go of the throttle. It holds it in. Choke is on. Switch is on. Let's see how many pulls it takes. Chain brake isn't on because I showed you it's a scrub brake. Very unusual. It's really cool. Ear muscles. Give me love. I'm gonna open the door. Get a little smoky.
something that's cool. Idles like a Harley. This picks up fine. Don't want to rub it up here too much. We'll get it back to the shop. Maybe tomorrow. Hey, let's do it tomorrow. So I can end this one and get on to my next 80 year old, old one, eh? So, right on, man. That was pretty cool. And uh, the owner of this will be happy. And he'll have it for the rest of his life. It'll last forever. It's just a beautiful machine. Very cool. That was great. That was fun. Okay. Well, I still got a bucket sweater on too. That's three days in a row. I got to change it. Just got to wash it, buddy. I don't like to have it too dirty, eh? Okay. Hey, everyone out there. Keep sawing wood, sticking a nice rubber in the road. Thanks again, Fireman from Vernon. You guys are awesome. Dean, thanks, man. Uh, we will be getting together with that Mike Akers and with my dad, and uh, we'll be uh, talking about some saws when we hit, sit around with those old guys. Those guys have been around since the first of saws. I really need to sit them down and talk to them and go over that book with Mike Akers as well. So check out the Chainsaw Collectors Corner Club. And uh, if you don't uh, have one of those books that they have, uh, you can buy it at walkersawshop.com and uh, check them all out yourself. Or just go on that website and look. Okay? Have a great day. Bye.